I made a couple of videos recently discussing space exploration and one of them was about colonization of the planet Mars and a lot of people seem to appreciate the change of pace that video provided so I thought I'd do something like that again. Believe it or not, technology and space science was one of the original themes of this channel way back when and so it's nice to occasionally return to my roots. The social commentary and political videos are obviously important topics to discuss, but they're also incredibly intense and divisive. The stories I cover are exhausting, and I find myself ruminating about them, and just generally worried about the state of the world long after I've logged off the internet for the evening. The constant intrusive nature of minute-to-minute -minute social media news updates is not only distracting, but emotionally draining just to keep up with the flow of insanity and the other god-awfulness happening globally. It's far too easy to get caught up in the minutia and the momentary chaos that will ultimately pass in just a few days, weeks, or months. By focusing so myopically on the tiny details that divide us, we lose sight of the bigger picture ideas and concepts that can truly unite us as human beings. I can't think of anything more unifying than the collaborative nature of space exploration projects and taking our heads out of our echo chambers and looking up and outward into the stars. Even the language and labels we can use sometimes to define people across the political spectrum is incredibly divisive, exclusionary, and alienating, and that should never be our intention. It's fair to say it can be hard to bring people together across the political spectrum, but one thing's for sure, the timeless questions of mankind's very existence, the nature of reality in the universe, and our future in the stars are discussions that bring people from all political persuasions together, from the left to the right and everything in between. Today's video is focusing on our nearest celestial neighbor, the only one human beings have ever set foot on, the moon. In a time when everyone's scrambling to journey to Mars, it seems, I think people are really taking our moon for granted right now. And I think it's all how you look at the night sky. If you happen to be out some night and the moon is either full or just a crescent, you know, we're so used to seeing it that it's easy to just dismiss it as a two-dimensional object in the sky. But you have to think that this is basically a planet. I mean, it's a moon, but if it wasn't orbiting the Earth, it would be classified as a planet. It's larger than Pluto and the ninth largest rocky world in our solar system. At 3,474 kilometers in diameter, it's 27% the size of the Earth. So it's obviously much smaller, but it's a huge place when you think about it. We see it in such crystal clear detail, and it's really far away at 384,400 kilometers from the Earth. Now, I'm willing to bet that most of you have seen the moon through a telescope at one point in your life, but if you're someone who hasn't, you really have to. It just changes your entire perspective of it, and you finally begin to appreciate it as a real place. It's really awe-inspiring. Now, you can find plenty of high-quality telescope footage of the surface of the moon on YouTube, but there's nothing like seeing it with your own eyes through a telescope, because it's live, immediate. You're seeing the surface of another world in real time, and it really connects you to the place. I have some crappy footage here that I shot when I was like 19 or 20 from Dunsink Observatory, and that was a very old telescope. It's basically a museum. I'm here with my dad, and his late friend William Dumpleton, who used to manage the observatory. The footage is awful because I shot it with an old Canon XL1S, and the video clip has been compressed a few times, but you get the general idea. It's really amazing to see craters and canyons and mountains on the moon as this alien world comes to life before your very eyes. You don't need a telescope to see that I have no bald spot in this picture because I was very, very young and had a full head of hair back then. Oh well. I often imagine what it must have been like for the crew of Apollo 8 when they became the first people to orbit the moon. I imagine seeing it as a three-dimensional sphere for the first time in the history of our species. No longer looking at it from the surface of the Earth and to witness the rise of our own planet in the sky from another world and a completely different perspective. Well, just 12 men have set foot on the lunar surface and we haven't been back since 1972. We're closing in on 50 years, and I think it's an absolute disgrace that we haven't established a permanent colony there. Now, obviously, we can't terraform the moon. It's too small, the gravity's too low, there's no atmosphere. It's constantly bombarded by radiation, of course. Being on the surface of the moon is effectively like being in space. But it seems to me that the resources are all there on the moon to potentially develop a human outpost of some kind that could maybe serve as a refueling center and a launching pad to the rest of the solar system. 
And with people like Elon Musk driving down the costs of space travel with his work at SpaceX, private enterprise may one day be able to launch a fully-fledged tourist industry on the moon. NASA believes that a cheap $10 billion lunar base could be developed in a six-year period. Now, this isn't going to happen anytime soon, but it's encouraging to hear how feasible and practical it could be. We could be living on the moon by 2022. Again, that's overly ambitious. There's no immediate plans for this. But NASA claims a cheap $10 billion lunar base could be ready for humans in just six years. Proposals look at low-cost solutions for a permanent base on the moon. They say a base capable of supporting 10 people could be built by 2022. This could be then expanded to house more than 100 people in a decade. Many of the technologies needed already exist on the ISS and on Earth. It's widely regarded as one of the greatest human achievements ever made, but putting a man on the moon was no cheap undertaking. The Apollo missions to send just 12 men to the dusty lunar surface cost $25 billion, estimated to be worth about $170 billion in today's money, but it appears we may be able to send humans back to our rocky satellite and set up a permanent base where they could live for just a fraction of the cost. A group of NASA scientists has calculated it may be possible to return to the surface of the moon within the next five to seven years for a total cost of just $10 billion. It's about $6.4 billion British pounds sterling. Indeed, they say it may be possible to build a base that can support up to 10 astronauts for more than a year by 2022, as many of the technologies needed already exist today. Now, following my Mars video I made recently, I got an email from a gentleman by the name of David Evans, and he's an aerospace engineer, and he's working on a volunteer lunar colonization animation to showcase existing technologies with colleagues from NASA and ESA as to enable humanity to colonize the moon. This project aims to showcase what can be done within about five to eight years from now. The animation is still in pre-alpha stage, there's still some work to be done to it, but it gives you a great sense of the potential here. And there's a lot of renewed interest in the moon from governments and private enterprise and of course the public. And it's taken us this long, 50 years almost, since the uh, last moon landing, to finally get the costs down and develop the technologies to such a level that a sustainable future human colony on the moon is not just a question of if, but when, and that when might be a lot sooner than we think. Anyway, guys, that about does it for this video. Let me know your thoughts below in the comments section. Normal service will be resumed tomorrow with the regressive news. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.